And now you see how very hard Rosberg is trying and how very hard it Emerson Fittipaldi is trying. Rosberg from Finland, Emerson Fittipaldi from Brazil. He is going to have led for 26 laps in winning his first Formula One race as surely he must. The chequered flag is ready. The chequered flag is waved and Kenny Rosberg has won in the Theodore by about one second only from Emerson Fittipaldi and with Tony Trimmer lapped at least twice behind them. A marvellous race and a brilliant victory. As we look now at the two Fittipaldi cars, Rothberg challenging his team leader, ex-world champion Emerson Fittipaldi as they come up and take John Watson. Rosberg in the yellow Fittipaldi, Daly in the blue and red Tyrrell. They are battling for 13th place and Rosberg goes through and takes Daly. Now Pironi is going to go through and take Daly. No, no he's not. With Derek Daly leading kicking Rosberg, Daly in the Tyrrell, Rosberg in the new Fittipaldi which is going extremely well indeed and behind them Alain Prost as they go round the right hand of Bodge Curve. Daly driving a steady, cool race as they go down to Texaco running a little wide with Rosberg and he's off! That's Derek Daly off, pretty backwards and that's a barbed wire fence behind them. But uh, Rosberg of course will have a lot of problems getting past the super powerful Ferrari and uh, Villeneuve has become uh, a master of using that power advantage. He's been driving uh, some pretty nasty chassis from Ferrari. Ferraris have, have never been great chassis makers. You see Rosberg climbing all over him. Villeneuve slow onto the power. Can he out drag it? It looks Rosberg's alongside. He's inside for the corner and he's through. Little mistake by Villeneuve to get it on. I was just saying what a master he was of using that power to keep in front and uh, the wretched man goes and makes an idiot out of me like that. But. Uh, Trying to be surprised by Rosberg, looking for just that sort of mistake. Look at the power of that Ferrari as he accelerates back, and he's having... Yes, oh dear, oh dear. And that's amazing. Villeneuve just walked past him on the straight, but Rosberg still counter-attacking. Back into the hairpin again, where Rosberg passed him last time. Let's just see if that Ferrari really is slow around the hairpin. Yeah, Villeneuve, yes, Rosberg, back inside again. Can we see a repeat performance? Yes, we can, but judging by the way things happened on the straight last time, Villeneuve won't be too worried. In fact, Villeneuve's virtually disappeared out of sight. Where's he gone? Well, there now. he is, yes, closing up again, but Rosberg looks to have enough space this time, and he's got the inside of the corner protecting it. Oops, and Villeneuve got onto the marbles. He spun it, but he stopped. He's still in the race. He's lost very little time. Rosberg is really driving magnificently. He's going to... In this race, he has to go quickly down this downhill left-hander, and he's through, he's done it! Rosberg into the lead, and he's going to have enough daylight too, at the end, when they get onto the straight, if he's quick round here, and he's got a couple of corners to put the air between him and Alan Frost, and I, that looks like it for Kecky Rosberg. What a wonderful drive! Yes, but is Alain Prost going to let him get away with it? It's a Frenchman in a French car in front of a French crowd in the Swiss Grand Prix, and Kiki Rothberg is on his way after a magnificent fighting 80 lap drive in a perfectly set up Williams and look at the gap now. Kiki Rothberg will take the lead of the World Championship if he keeps it all together and his first Grand Prix win and what a wonderful day for him and a great entertainment for us. And across the line, Kiki Rothberg has won for Williams, the flags are flying, the mechanics are cheering, the finish section in the crowd goes bad. Rosberg and Kenny Rosberg get his return on lap 28 for Harry Mario Andretti. Out goes the Ferrari and that means to say of course that now Kenny Rosberg is in a commanding position. He did the fifth place that he needs to be in and as we look at his calendar John Watson, Kenny Rosberg if he finishes where he is now will get the two points that he needs to guarantee him the world championship irrespective of what happens on Louder's appeal and irrespective of where John Watson finishes and there, taking the last corner of the last lap is the world champion of 90 to uh, look at that picture don't forget that whilst you're looking at a very deserving 1982 world champion the new world champion Ketty Rosberg finishes 5th in the season Palace Grand Prix
reigning world champion Peggy Rothberg has qualified his Ford Cosworth powered Tag Williams fastest with a superb lap over two seconds inside the record. A superb start for Keki Rosberg. It's uh, Rosberg leading, Rosberg leading. They're putting fuel in and they will be changing all four tyres. One left hand front is ready and we've got a fire, we've got a fire. But they put it out I think. And what bad luck and what a pity. Now, Peggy Rothberg, of whom we had lost sight for quite a long time, is really on his way. He's probably the fastest driver on the circuit because he has really got the incentive now to go. And Rothberg is perfectly placed to get a little bit of a toe off ladder and sweep past him as they come down. And McLaren's very fast in the straight, but Rothberg's got the inside line for the corner, and there goes Peggy Rothberg into second place. Now we wait for the second place man after an equally storming, superb drive, Kiki Rosberg. The red light is on, it's green and it's go. And Rosberg comes through from the second row and he hits Arnoux. He goes up into the lead with Patrick Tormbe. Yes, and here we see the start again. You see Rosberg gets the drop. Rosberg climbing all over the back of him, looking for a way through. Oh, and Rosberg loses it. Guerrero has come out of the pack. Beautiful start by Rosberg. John Watson is up into third place, but now Danny Sullivan is in third position with John Watson as they go up to the right-hander at Druids and it's Keki Rosberg leading and there is the reigning world champion Keki Rosberg and René Arnoux looks as though he's using the power of the Ferrari and indeed he is to punch his way past on the first out of 40 laps to take the lead from the world champion Keki Rosberg the first four cross the line almost together and now Rosberg is right in the slipstream of Arnoux and he's surely going to try and take him up Paddock Bend but Sullivan comes right up alongside Rosberg. A magnificent scrap for the first four places on this, the seventh lap out of 40. And Sullivan goes up and tries to take second place from Arnu. That's exactly what happened at Long Beach between Rosberg and uh, Tombe. Yes, Rosberg's in a difficult situation now. He's got uh, Danny Sullivan climbing all over him like a rash, but he's having a go at the Ferrari. Can he get inside him? He has done it. Yes, Rosberg's through in three. The only problem is he's picked a bad spot because the power of the Ferrari might well take it past him again because they're now onto the longest straight on the circuit. But he got through quite quickly and uh, yes, I think he got the drop and now that looks like Rosberg's away. Frank Williams, the Williams team owner and leader, is regarding this race as being as important as a Grand Prix. He says, I am here to win. Peggy Rosberg only knows one way to drive and that is to win and he's certainly showing it. Now, he's going to go up the inside all the way up to Druid's corner and Sullivan's come up very quickly but you see Rosberg move straight over the inside. Sullivan's having a look and Rosberg has been particularly slow around Druid's. Now Sullivan is on well, the inside but he drops back. Rosberg lent on him there, he used the full width of the road quite justifiably to push Sullivan out. Sullivan quite correctly had to back off and did so to avoid the accident. You have to take your hat off to Kiki Rosberg and my goodness how he's trying. He just looks in his mirror again and think he's got all day to win this race. Certainly has a tre another tremendous performance from Rosberg in the, the most difficult circumstances. Now Rosberg surely has got the lead that he needs over Danny Sullivan to take the chequered flag and the second Formula One victory in his career and they crowd to the pit wall for Williams team and give him the acclamation that he deserves. A race of champions that we will remember for a long time, the 14th in the series, won by the reigning world champion, and deservedly so, Kiki Rosberg, who controlled the race from the front.